Thank you for that, Chrissy, and good morning. So we, we do have a little bit of an interesting story for you today. Um, it's, it's certainly one that's has captivated a lot of attention of, of late. Um, yes, as, as was described, we, um, we take your natural gas and we can produce hydrogen out of it um, where the carbon is stored as, as valuated graphite, which has a market in itself. Uh, and in this way, I mean, it can be a, a, a low cost and a low emission approach. So there are some keys that I, I want to run through on this technology um, that are takeaways from this. One is that this hydro movement is quick and it's, and it's very big and, and projected to be quite large going forward. So it's projected to be 2.5 trillion by 2050 by a, a few reports. And it's coming towards Australia quite quickly as well. We're, we're kind of a bit behind the rest of the world. We're about 10 years behind, but it's coming quite quickly. And it's starting to get some government support. I think from a hazer perspective, we're, we're at this really exciting period now where we've kind of broken the back of the, the R&D aspect. Our pilot plant's going much better than expected. And now we're really transitioning towards more commercialisation. We're looking more for the strategic partnerships and the off-take agreements. So this is real the, the business end of the... Um, uh, the conversation. Um, and how it relates better to the, um, this, this conference here is it, it actually creates a really good bridge from where we are now as a fossil-faced economy through to a, a more renewable utopic scenario because it allows you to utilise the, the captured infrastructure and the captured cost of a fossil fuel industry but without this CO2 and, and within a, a cost-friendly um, manner. So just briefly as a, a bit of background, why is it right for disruption? The growth sector in hydrogen is actually in the energy industry. However, there are barriers to growth of hydrogen in this energy industry, and I'll just run these through quickly with you. So the majority of, graph of hydrogen is actually produced via fossil fuel reforming. There's a variety of different methods of doing that. The end result, though, is you get hydrogen but a significant CO2, so much so that if if you produce hydrogen using this method, you'd actually be producing more CO2 than if you just burnt the natural or burnt the natural gas or the fossil fuels to begin with. So there's no real net benefit for it to go into the energy sector. An alternative to that is a, a newly emerging electrolysis where water is split using electricity. Um, however, the energy intensity in this process is, is quite high, and so what it relies is a, a very cheap and a, and a very uh, well, clean form of, of power for this to happen. And um, the, the technology needs a little bit of development in order to make it cost effective in this way. So this gives, gives Hazer a really interesting um, opportunity. Uh, we've got a small um, animation to show next that uh, you know, helps to illustrate this, this process better than I can, I can articulate it. Hazer. A low emission, low cost hydrogen and graphite production process. The Hazer process enables the effective conversion of natural gas into hydrogen and high quality graphite using iron ore as a process catalyst. Welcome to the Hazer pilot plant. Transforming today's commodities into clean energy and materials for tomorrow. The Hazer pilot plant uses natural gas as its primary feedstock. The gas is stored as LNG, which is regasified and fed through the main gas manifold before being taken to the reactor to commence the Hazer process. The Hazer plant is based on a reactor called the fluidized bed reactor, where solids and gases can freely mix to enable the efficient conversion of natural gas into hydrogen and graphite. The reactor is heated to approximately 900 degrees Celsius. The gas is forced through a distributor plate within the reactor. The velocity suspends the iron catalyst or graphitic particles in the flow of gas. The catalyst is fluidized, suspended in the gas, and mixing the solid sand-like particles with the natural gas. In this process, the methane molecules in the natural gas interact with the surface of the catalyst, decomposing into hydrogen and graphite. Under these conditions, the catalyst disintegrates into nanofragments, a process known as dusting. The graphite is deposited on the surface of these tiny catalyst particles, while the hydrogen is released and mixes with the original natural gas feed. The graphite accumulates on the surface of the catalyst particle, reducing its density, which allows it to be liberated from the catalyst bed via the passing gas stream. The reactor expels a combination of gases, unreacted natural gas, and the hydrogen product, 
as well as the solid graphite particles. This stream is filtered with sintered metal plates, yielding high purity graphite with minor amounts of encapsulated catalyst. After removing the solid graphite, the gas from the reactor can then be purified to remove the methane and any other byproducts, leaving pure hydrogen that can be used as an industrial chemical or for clean energy applications, as a fuel for vehicles or for power generation. The Hazer process has now created two new products, a raw 80 to 95% purity graphite product and hydrogen. The gas has been transformed. So in summary, it's exactly that. So we get natural gas and we use iron ore as the catalyst. Um, essentially the novelty in this is that we've been able to use the iron ore. Um, iron ore in itself is not a catalyst and what we've done is essentially allowed the process to make it into a catalyst. So it's, a, it's the process that creates its own catalyst essentially. And that, that drives the economics of this because the, uh, the price sensitivities of the catalyst become trivial, which has always been a key barrier in this type of technology. Um, and, and you can see here it opens up a, a lot of opportunities because we have two products and they're both very saleable products. Uh, the graphite that comes out of the reactor is, is on the order of 85 to 95 uh, and it can be post purified up to 99.9s or whatever you need for battery um, requirements or electrodes or what have you. Quite a large market in itself. So where we'd like to be placed, uh, obviously the, the process itself is, is actually the chemistry is emission free. It's just the energy required that requires a, a small amount of um, input that can be offset in a variety of different ways. Where we'd like to be placed is to be the lowest emission and also the lowest cost hydrogen producer. And that's born about the fact that you have two saleable products and the revenue from one can offset the cost of the other. So in terms of the market, just briefly, um, hydrogen's very little understood. It tends to be a captive market. Um, it works in the shadows. Uh, it's, it's an industrial commodity at, as, as it stands now. It's used as a, as a feedstock for um, ammonia production, so fertiliser, explosives. It's also used as a petrochemical refining. So there's a lot of uses, and it's quite a large market as is today. It's a $100 billion a year market. What's the biggest growth sector is, is in the, the clean aspect, of using it as an energy fuel. So at this stage, there's a lot of considerations about using it as an energy carrier for the renewable sector. However, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to get in place before that happens. And what we're considering is, well, this becomes a beautiful bridge between where we are now to where we'd like to be. Um, and as a, um, as a, as a byproduct, we're getting a synthetic graphite product, which has a large market in itself. So just a little bit more about the clean aspects, because that's our inherent advantage. The clean aspects is, is primarily used in um, uh, mobility, so hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, that kind of stuff. It's quite extensively used abroad, mainly in, in the US and Europe and in, in Asia in particular, in particular Japan. Um, it can also be used for stationary power and for heating. What we're finding is there's a lot of attraction actually from the clean industrial hydro market towards progressing towards low carbon options. We, we do get a lot of contact with regards to uh, people, particularly like say in the steel industry, about converting towards our process so that you can reduce emissions and increase profitability. Because we produce clean hydrogen, it also enables us to potentially um, capture other waste streams. And there's been a few conversations on that as well. So essentially you can turn, say, CO2 into methanol if you had a clean source of hydrogen. And this is what this provides. So just uh, quickly on the mobility sector, a beautiful synergy between hydrogen and graphite, um, depending on which camp you're in. Will it be electric vehicles or will it be hydrogen fuel cell vehicles? Well, a punt in hazer gives you a foot in each, in each camp because both require graphite, um, part of the batteries, part of the drivetrain, um, and obviously the fuel cell vehicle also requires the hydrogen aspect. So since, um, since we started, the, the research began in, right here in WA as part of my PhD. Uh, the company formed in 2010 where we, we got all the IP from the university, listed on the ASX late 2015. Since then we've uh, had quite a bit of um, interest from a few different companies, including uh, MOUs from a hydrogen uh, manufacturer in, in Texas, as well as a, another MOU from Premetals, which is a, a, a steel manufacturing plant. 
Uh, we have a binding agreement with uh, Mineral Resources, which is our largest shareholder, who are looking at things from the, the graphite side of things. So just to explain that aspect. Um, the technology has been developed on two fronts. There's basically a fork in the road where Hazer itself is developing it from the hydrogen angle, where hydrogen's the main product and graphite's the byproduct. Um, and Minres, in conjunction with us, is developing a different type of reactor that uses the same chemistry, but is more in, in line with producing higher end graphite, with hydrogen being the kicker. And as you can see there, it addresses different, the intent is to address different markets. So this is just a, a visual snapshot of how much we've progressed. So it started obviously in the lab, laboratory days with quite small. Now we're at a scale that actually can fulfil some market requirements around Australia. Um, the results that we've been seeing have been far exceeding our expectations, which is very promising. So much so that we've actually um, realised that the technology enjoys being scaled up. Uh, ultimately, we, we're having difficulties at the smaller scales and the larger scales seems to open up a lot more opportunities. So we're very excited the fact that the next, next stage could actually be a lot, lot larger and actually addressing markets. So in terms of the path to commercialisation, the green sections are all the different stages of scale up that we've looked at, that we've succeeded in and announced. And the blue stage is what we're going to be doing next. The interesting one is, is this demonstration plant that we're planning on doing, uh, that we've already started the feed study on. Um, and the idea is to actually have a plant that can provide hydrogen for an existing market. So we're looking for offtake agreements for this particular scale. Uh, Minres is currently constructing a, a pilot plant for the, the graphite based reactor. And it's currently, whoop, currently being done in, in, um, in Kwinana. Uh, the idea behind that is it can, uh, it can be used to, to look for offtake agreements abroad and ideally aggressively scale up after that. So there are multiple commercialisation options. I'm not sure that's not coming up. So there's, um, we've already explained the partnership option with Minres, where there's a, a royalty agreement. There's a build on operate option, licensing option. Uh, essentially, we, uh, we have the ability of being able to play with whatever suits the, you know, the strategy going forward to maximise our value. Uh, we, we're certainly looking at all these options. So we've got a very tight register. Top 20 owns 42%. Uh, we've got plenty of cash in the bank. It'll last us to the end of next year. Uh, we've also got some options that are in the money that will net us another nine mil. Uh, end of the year, ideally. So just uh, to reconfirm the, uh, the premise, it's the, the hydro market is, is progressing rapidly. There's been a lot of movement of late. We're quite fortunate to be riding this way and to be well positioned to take part in this. The R&D has got to a point where we are we're generally looking into the, the commercialisation aspects and it's all about the relationships, partnerships, offtake agreements. And uh, in terms of the connection between the fossil fuel industry and, and, and us, it becomes this beautiful transition piece between where we are now to where we're going in a cost-effective and clean manner. Uh, we have a booth, so welcome to answer any questions then. Uh, we appreciate this has been a very condensed version of what it is, but we'd like to discuss with you further if you're interested. Thank you.